welcome to Run It Back Philly. DJ Eastwood doesn't need your mother f***ing intro. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top. So you... It's not impossible. But the Philadelphia 76ers are a make-or-miss team. If we're making shots and making threes, we can hang with anybody. If we're missing shots, we are cooked. There's no plan B. There's nothing else that can happen because when we're missing shots, then then Spolstra just throws the kitchen sink at Embiid. Now Embiid's triple team, quadruple team, quadruple sextuplet teamed because he, they don't care if he passes the ball to anybody because nobody can score. So any team, they're going to bring the defense to Embiid. He's going to be forced to pass the ball because uh, what can he do with a triple team besides get called for an offensive foul? So he ha- they force him to pass it. It's all about if those other players can step up. And that's why, you know, some people like to come at Embiid. He doesn't never steps up in important games or whatever. He's a center. It's not the same. It's not like a guard like a Kobe Bryant on the perimeter. He's a center. He doesn't initiate the offense. He needs somebody to get him the ball. You could take. They took him out of the game last game in the fourth quarter by fronting him and double and triple teaming him before he even got the ball. We couldn't even get the ball in his hands. It's different when you're a center. You need guards that can score. When I first started this stream, somebody in the chat said, you can't win a championship centered around a center. You're wrong. Shaquille O'Neal has two finals MVPs. Guess what Shaquille O'Neal always had on his championship teams? Elite perimeter creators. Kobe Bryant and Dwayne Wade. If Shaq had this team, he would get triple teamed and quadruple teamed and he wouldn't be able to do anything with the ball the same way Joel Embiid can't do anything with the ball when he gets it. It's the same situation. He needs elite Guards on the floor. He's a center. There will be no Joel Embiid slander. If you watch this game, or you watch this series, or you watch this playoffs, or you watch this 76ers team this whole season, and you for one second think that Joel Embiid is at fault for a loss like this, drop your address. Drop your address in the chat. Drop your address. Run it back nation showing up at your front door. Drop your address. I'm tired of it. It's ridiculous. Say you don't watch the game without saying you don't watch the game. Go ahead. I mean, are you kidding me right now? Most NBA players would not even be in the same city as their team right now if they went through what Joel Embiid just went through. They'd be sleeping on a hammock on a yacht somewhere. With a broken orbital bone and a torn ligament in the thumb. Five days of concussion protocol. This man is an absolute warrior. I have never seen a player put his body on the line like Joel Embiid. Well, I have. His name was Allen Iverson. I haven't seen anybody since Allen Iverson to put his body on the line like this. He goes out there, first quarter, diving in the front row. Eh, don't really want you to do that, Joel. But that's just how the dude plays the game. He's going to give it everything he has as long as his heart is beating and the medical staff We'll let him go out there. He's going out there. Then he gets hit in the face. Most NBA players wouldn't be in the in the game, period, with what he's going through right now. And then he gets hit in the face. Most NBA players would have went to the locker room and not returned. This guy went and sat on the bench. His face is swollen. He's crying real tears in pain because his face is broken. There's a trainer over there feeling the cracked bone in his face. And this guy says, I'm good. 
puts the mask back on, and goes back out on the court. So there's no Joel Embiid slander. Because it's not his fault that Pascal Siakam decided to elbow him square in the damn cheekbone down by 39 points in game six in Toronto. It's not his fault. A little freak accident, torn ligament in the thumb. And he's still out there trying. Quite obviously, he's not 100%. You don't have to tell me that. That dude's giving it everything he has. No Joel Embiid slander. As for the TNT crew at halftime, <laughs> I was sitting up here setting up the stream at halftime, the thumbnail, the title, the, the everything else, and I could hear down in my living room Charles Barkley. And I'm sitting up here thinking, is he really saying this right now? Is this guy serious? Joel Embiid's coming out here <laughs> with no energy. You know, after losing the MVP voting, I, I thought maybe he would have been a little bit fired up after losing that award. I think it, it's really getting to him the fact that he didn't lose the, that he didn't win that award, you know, and he's coming out here and he's having a bad performance because he's upset that he didn't win the NB, the MVP award. What? Do you guys have a brain inside your skull? There's absolutely no way Charles Barkley thinks what he just said is true. And then Stephen A. Smith is tweeting it on Twitter. I replied to Stephen A. I said, Stephen A., bring me on your show. I will smoke you. I got a full live stream set up. Send me the Zoom link. I will smoke you on your show. If you think what you just tweeted makes any damn sense. You're talking about a guy with a broken face, a torn ligament in his thumb, just got out of concussion protocol, is out of shape now because he had to sit around for eight days, and you think he's playing bad because he didn't win the MVP. <laughs> what a pathetic take. What a pathetic take. The game was over when Joel B got hit in the face, and it was a clean play. Um... Tyrone from 97.5 tweeted that he got slapped and the refs missed it and it was horrible and we saw it. He hit the ball. The ball hit him in the face. Just an unfortunate thing that happened and that's something that happens in every basketball game. Just so happens when you have a broken cheekbone and a mask on and the ball hits you in the face, it hurts a lot. The game was over when that happened. He looked like he couldn't see out of his eye. His face looked all jacked up. His eyes are watering. The problem with this team is and has been Joel Embiid's entire career is that when he's down, when he's struggling, when he's out there with a broken face, torn ligament in his thumb, shooting the ball poorly, struggling, nobody steps up. Nobody steps up. And it all comes full circle in the fourth quarter when he's getting the ball at the free throw line and they're literally sending the entire defense at him. Because nobody else could do anything. That brings me to James Harden. Man, that 30-point James Harden game, that sure was fun, wasn't it? That was a fun game. Very short-lived. We're back. James comes back down to reality, scores seven points in the first quarter, and scores seven points the rest of the game. Weak drives, trying to take players, getting his shot blocked with players not even jumping, just smacking it. Who knows, man? It's in Miami. You know? Was James down there hanging out in the clubs? I don't know. James looked real good in Philly. He looked real bad in Miami for two games. He looked real good in Philly for two games. Goes back down to Miami. Looks bad again. Looks slow again. Looks winded again. Looks tired again. Oh. Those Miami clubs are open until 5 a.m., man. I'm just saying. 
You think James flies down there and goes to bed at 9 o'clock? Come on, man. He probably left the game in DJ Khaled's limo. 